<laughs> UGK swishes an herb. Yep. Working with the underground kings, man. Can you speak on that? First of all, I'd like to give him much love and shout out to Chad, man, Pimp C. Yes, sir. Uh, miss him. Um, Bun B as well. Um, I had so, a chance when, when Pimp moved to Atlanta, I had a chance to really meet him and hang out with him, and we became really best friends to the point where um, he helped me produce Sleepy's Theme. Mm. Um, I helped him. We actually produced uh, Look at Me, Motherfucker, Look at Me at my house. <laughs> And uh, on on these dad these these ADAT machines, and because I had four of them, he had four of them. Yeah. And uh, I, I co-produced that with him at the house. If you listen to it on the keys, that's me. My God. Uh, so me and Pimp, man, we had the kind of relationship that we were just, man, you couldn't separate us. So when it came to that, he always loved the song Peaches and Herb. He would tell me every day, man, I gotta do some of that Peaches and Herb. I was like, man, whatever you want to do, I don't care. It's cool. Then he came up with Switches and Herb. I said, fine, let's get it. Cause I, you know, he loved the record so much, I just wanted to do whatever he wanted. It was yeah. it was cool with me, you know what I'm saying? So we've always had that kind of relationship, man, that kind of love for each other. So, you know, once again, man, Pimp, uh, when Pimp was in my life, bro, Pimp did a lot of special things for me uh, that people don't even know, bro. Can you speak on the creative side of it though, with both of y'all being producers and singers at the same time? Let me tell you something, man. It was, I was, a, I, I'm still a fan. I was the biggest Pimp C fan. So when I finally got a chance to see him work, bro, let me tell you something. That's one of the coldest, most funkiest moments you ever want to see somebody produce. For somebody to hit a sample and feel it so much that they start rocking like this. <laughs> oh! I sit right there, sleep. Oh! What do you do? What the big want to tell him? What the whole want to? Boy, I'm sitting there like, Come up with the whole song. My God. Man, Pimp was untouchable, bro. Like, I still use some of his tactics on how I produce. <laughs> oh. he, he's insane, man. He, he was insane. He was so funky. I always told him, I said, bro, if you did a singing album, I would, I would have a problem. See that? It would be a problem for me because, my dude, we just alike. Like, we, I told him, I said, we need to do a singing album together. We're going to do a lot of stuff together that we didn't get a chance to do. What goes through your mind when you think about all of the plans that folks be having and then for somebody to pass, unfortunately, like that, when you had plans with people, man? I know. It hurt, bro. And the first of all, it really hurt because he passed and how he passed. It was terrible. So, you know, what was crazy, he had called me two days before we were gonna do like another production team called the 808 Boys. Mm. And I was gonna move to California with him. Yeah. And uh, he was like, yeah, man, so I got the place. I got this, we are gonna have this. I'm gonna have you come out in about five days. I said, cool, man. And two days later, bro, I got a call from Ray saying he passed. My God. Yeah, early in the morning, uh, early call from Ray. And uh, it was terrible, bro. But we had a lot of plans together. When you think about this music industry and just maneuvering it and, and staying alive, because like you say, when you had the time of your life during that time, yeah. how the hell did you keep from dying? Man, I had a, a, a angel on my side, bro. I ain't gonna lie to you. Um, I always felt protected. No matter what I did, I, for some reason I could have a feeling and I would just know if something bad about to go down. It was just a gift. I don't know. It might sound crazy, but it is so true. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Every time something would go down, I would have a feeling that I need to leave. So yeah. that would that was the thing that would save me. I was trusting my gut. Always. I didn't care. No, I didn't care what was going down. 